If technologically advanced life forms exist out there, then why aren't they here? Mark, you were asking about the Fermi Paradox, which is one of the most spectacularly weird questions in science. Noted physicist Enrico Fermi first asked the question many years ago, looking out and saying, okay, if there are billions of stars out there in our galaxy, then surely there must be teeming with advanced civilizations, and yet we've seen no evidence of any of them. Why not? It only really gets interesting when you stop and look at the numbers. I mean, you know, we use the word billion quite a bit, but we don't stop and think about how impossibly huge that number is. You know, for example, think about the best stargazing experience you've ever had in your life. Maybe you were far away from city lights and you, it was just stars from horizon to horizon. And then consider the fact that as far as our eyes can see with the naked eye in space, would take up this amount of our galaxy. That's pretty freaking incredible. It's been estimated that for every grain of sand on Earth, there are 10,000 stars out there. And that's just in our Milky Way galaxy. And there's an estimated 100 billion galaxies in our observable universe. The Hubble Ultra Deep Field picture contained over 10,000 galaxies, and it focused on a segment of the sky that was the size of a grain of salt held at arm's length. But still, just staying in our galactic backyard, when you consider the number of stars out there, and then you eliminate just the number of sun-like stars, and then the number of sun-like stars that might have an Earth-like planet with water on it, and then the number of Earth-like planets that might have actually, you know, sprouted life, and then the number of Earth-like planets with life that actually created intelligent life, that's still, like, thousands of civilizations out there. That, by the way, is the basis of Drake's equation, which is something that scientists use to try to figure out how many advanced civilizations might be out there in the universe. But let's go even deeper. Our sun's actually a relatively young star, and the Earth's had plenty of setbacks over the years, so there's a very good chance that there are a lot of planets out there that developed intelligent life and advanced intelligent life billions of years before we did. I mean, think about how far we're going to advance in the next thousand years. Now imagine a billion. Some theorists have categorized uh, ancient civilizations into three different categories. Category one is a civilization that's learned how to use all the energy on their planet. And category two is a civilization that's uh, learned to use all the energy in their home star. And in category three is a civilization that's learned how to get all the energy out of their galaxy. That's super crazy advanced, of course, but even still, the insane amount of numbers of stars out there means that there should be several thousands of those types of civilizations in our galaxy alone. And yet, with thousands of years of people looking up to the sky and at least 50 years of SETI doing constant surveillance and looking specifically for signs of life out there, we've still come up with absolutely nothing. And that is the Fermi Paradox. It's a fascinating question with no definite answer, but there are hundreds of theories out there. And I'm going to give you 10 of my favorite. And some of these are uh, a bit out there. Possibility number one, we have been visited, maybe many times, but it happened long before human beings arrived. I mean, we've only been human beings as we know it for about 50,000 years. If aliens had visited here a million years ago, they would just would have been like, oh, a planet full of huge monster reptiles. Let's move along, please. Possibility number two, we're in the sticks. It might be that the galaxy is actually vastly populated, but we just happen to live in a very remote and desolate part of the galaxy. You know, there are some Native Americans in the further reaches of the Americas that probably didn't know that Europeans landed for a long time after it actually happened. Possibility number three, the whole idea of colonizing and spreading is a primitive and pointless act to a higher intelligent species. It's possible that for a species to become super intelligent, they've learned to turn off their imperialistic drive and, and have just uploaded themselves into a you know, virtual paradise of their own making. Possibility number four, there's plenty of signals in the galaxy, we're just too primitive to understand it. It's like imagine walking around a city with a walkie-talkie trying to talk to somebody. There's nobody else out there because their technology has advanced a lot further than that. That's probably the case of advanced civilizations out there. We just have no idea how to detect their signals. It's also possible that there are species out there that work on entirely different time frames, so it might take them a whole decade to just say hello, but to us it's just a bunch of noise. Possibility number five, they are all around us, but in other dimensions. A super advanced species might have learned to travel within other dimensions. There could be an alien sitting right next to you and not know it. So get your hand out your pants. Possibility number six, there's actually a ton of evidence, but the Illuminati is keeping it secret. You know. Possibility number seven, we're in a galactic zoo. I told you this would go to some weird places here. 
Some believe that there are lots of advanced civilizations out there, but they're just kind of watching us right now, like we're in a huge zoo exhibit. Maybe we're supposed to get to a certain level of advancement before they connect with us, you know? Maybe they've even got a protective bubble around us to keep outside signals from reaching us, just to keep us in ignorance. Possibility number eight, galactic predators. These next two get a little dark. Maybe there are thousands of super intelligent species out there, but they're smart enough to not make a lot of noise to avoid being attacked by predatory species. You know, like a mouse hiding from a hawk. Some of the most brilliant minds in the world are actually very worried about this, like Stephen Hawking and Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan actually was saying that it's a better idea for us to just study the universe and listen for a long time before we start putting messages out there into a jungle that we don't understand. And on that note, Possibility number nine, a super predator. This is a Michael Bay film come to life. This theory states that there's only one other species out there, but it's a super intelligent predatory species that just waits for other species to get to a certain level of intelligence, just listens for their signals, and then once they find them, they go wipe them out. Ha <laughs> ha! Which means somewhere out there is an actual Death Star. Where's Han Solo when you need him? Chewie. We're home. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for Christmas. And possibility number 10. There is no reality. Yeah. At least not the way you think there is. The more science progresses and the more answers we have, the more questions also seem to pop up to the point that a lot of things at the edges of our scientific knowledge just don't make any sense. So much so that very respected scientists are starting to seriously consider the possibility that we're just living in a hologram or a computer simulation that was built just for us. There even seems to be some math backing that up. So maybe there really are no aliens. Maybe there's no us. Or maybe we only exist in the dreams of an emergent superconsciousness created by particles connected through quantum entanglement throughout space and time. All of these scenarios are actually possible, and they're all mind-blowing. But the thing to keep in mind is that behind this massive bird's nest of speculation lies an actual fact. The fact that our observations and our math just don't connect. Maybe someday we'll have an answer. Hopefully that'll be a good thing. Alright, thanks a lot for watching and thanks to Mark for a great question. If you've got a question you'd like to ask, just leave it in the comments below and that will make you wiser. And if this is your first time here and you thought it was interesting at all, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and I will come back every Monday with more thought-provoking videos to make you feel more interesting around your friends and at the water cooler. Until next time, love you guys. Have a great week.